Okay, we're CHOP students. I got a, another question about number two. I was just working on this one, uh, number... I'm sorry, I was just working on number two. And then the other question I got was from number four here. And it uh, looks like uh, this individual uh, uh, got it wrong. Let's give this one a try. It says, ignoring air resistant, a person uh, with a mass of 60 kilograms does a bungee jump from a bridge. They fall a distance of 6.77 meters before the bungee cord, which acts like a vertical spring, starts to pull up on them. Uh, after this moment, the person moves downward another 11 meters before reaching the lowest point. So maybe just to get a good understanding, here's the person starting and the bungee cord, I'll just kind of imagine it kind of hanging down and then looping back up and is strapped to their ankles. So when the person jumps, they fall And of course, they fall without any tug from the bungee cord by the, the length of the, of the bungee cord. So it says they fall a distance of 6.77 meters. So 6.77 meters. They fall a distance of 6.77 meters before the bungee cord starts to pull on them. Okay, so now, right here at this level is when the bungee cord starts to pull, uh, slowing the individual down, and eventually coming to a stop. And if I understand the words correctly, it sounded like another 11 meters. At this moment, the person moves down another 11 meters before reaching their lowest point. Now, the reason it said 11 me I mean, the lowest point after 11 meters, so I'll put the 11 in the diagram, but it then pulls the person and snaps them back up. Keep that in mind because... There's a temptation on this problem to say, at this point, the force from the spring pulling up is equal to the mass of the person, the weight of the person, sorry, not the mass, but the weight of the, of the person, like it's an equilibrium. And I think you could fall into that trap because, oh, it came to zero, but that's not right. If that was true, the bungee cord wouldn't snap the person back up. At this point, uh, to snap the person back up, the force from the spring actually has to be greater than the weight of the, of the person. And so not just equal to it. Equal just would mean, you know, the net force would be zero. The weight pulling the person down and the bungee cord pulling them up are equal. But in order to go up, the bungee cord has to stretch more than enough to equal the, the weight of it. So, so don't fall into that category. In fact, you can kind of go through the motion and say what would happen is as the person is falling, because the force from a spring is equal to kx, technically minus kx, the magnitude's gonna keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, which means the person is going to have less of an acceleration downward, but still have an acceleration downward until the bungee stretches enough where the force from the bungee is equal to their weight. At that point, the acceleration is zero. But of course, also at that point, they're going really fast, and that's why they would continue well past that point. So they're not stopping at the point where the force from the spring is equal to their weight. They're going way past that. The place where the force equals their weight is the place where they stop accelerating. <laughs> so they're going really fast. I mean, they, they're going really fast already just from this free fall. Then they continue to even go faster until they stretch enough that the bungee cord's force equals the weight. So they're going real fast at this point. So then they got to go even way past that. And that's what this picture is trying to illustrate. 
All right, but it is an energy problem, so I will just start off by saying with all these energy problems, using the principle of conservation of energy, let's just say the energy you start with equals the energy that you end with. All right, and then again, maybe it's overkill, but it can't hurt to write out all the four different terms on each side, or I guess seven total terms, that we're working with. Because these first four represent what I call initial energy. The kinetic, the gravitational potential, and the elastic potential. And then this other term is then what kind of happens between initial and final. This is where you can either add extra energy because somebody from the outside pushes on you or take some energy away because of friction. But once you take what you start with and then whatever you either add or take away, that will equal to what you end with. And so I'll take the three energies we end with. And so these are the three we're working with, kinetic energy, gravitational potential energy, and our spring energy or elastic energy. All right. So if I start here and then think about this problem, I bet many of them will go away. For example, the one I was saying right here um, tends to go away. There is no friction involved. Okay. Um, since we are going down, there would be this gravitational potential energy issue. We'll talk more about it. Since we are treating the bungee as a spring, there is the spring energy. This is kind of interesting. We start at the top with no kinetic energy. So I'll say zero motion, zero velocity means zero kinetic energy. But we also finish this problem with no motion or no velocity and therefore no kinetic energy. So this problem doesn't really even have any kinetic energies. And these other ones have to do with either how high or how much they've stretched. So maybe I'll start with the spring. The spring is 1 half kx squared. And the x is measured from its natural length. That means if you don't put any pressure on the spring. And so back here at the start, there is no pressure on the, the spring, if you will. The spring is at its natural length. I guess that would be 6.77 meters. That's how long it is. And so this x is anything above, if it's stretching, or below, if it's compressing, its natural length. So it's at its natural length. So I would say the x initially of the spring would be zero, or I'll just cross it out. There is no elastic energy. Now, clearly later on, it has stretched seven meters. So that number is not zero. So more on that one in a second. Now, the gravitational potential energy is we've got a little bit of freedom to work with. Um, where do you want to call your height equals to zero? Uh, there's a lot to be said about calling your beginning spot zero, and then you go downward, you go negative. Uh, there's also something nice to be said about not dealing with negatives, and so we can avoid negatives if we call our lowest spot zero. Um, it's also our ending spot. So I think maybe I will do that. And I want to emphasize this freedom of choice is yours. Feel free to call h equal to zero either at its lowest point, uh, its highest point, or some other point. It really doesn't matter. And right here where the bungee begins to pull might not be a bad choice too. But the beginning or ending tend to be good points because remember, you calculate potential energy by mgh. And so if the, either the beginning or the end has an h equal to zero, that term will go away. So that, that, that's kind of a nice added effect and a reason why you might want to pick h equals to zero. So, so if I did what I said, I'll, I'll go ahead and do and call h equals to zero down here. 
Although part of me wants to put H equal to zero up there because I have a feeling a lot of students will do that. But but this is really to our advantage. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna stick to that. I'm gonna call H equal to zero here. All right. Because if I call H equals to zero here, this one right here, this potential energy of gravity goes away. And so really the only thing I have is then a potential energy due to gravity to start with that later then becomes a potential energy of the spring. So that's why I said it just kind of seems unnecessary to write all these down if they only involve two at the end. But it's good to, like I said, write all seven down and kind of see which ones are relevant for this problem. And if it only comes out to be two, great. It's going to make it a lot easier. Okay, and so I'll go ahead and do this. So the gravitational potential energy would be mg and h. Now let's go back to our conversation. Remember I said we'll call h equal to zero here. So the person uh, started 11 up and then another 6.7. So I guess that would be 17.77 meters And then, as we mentioned earlier, the potential energy from the spring, what I call elastic energy, is one-half K, and it's X squared. Again, X being this, how much does it stretch from its natural length? And so that's only 11 meters. See, it's only this part of the motion that is stretching the spring. And I think one of the things that can make this a hard problem then is mixing up the distance of height with the distance of the stretched spring. Okay, now I need to go back to the problem here now that I kind of talked about it. What are we looking for? Uh, the spring constant. And we have a mass of 60. Okay. So over here, I can put in a mass of 60. I can put 9.8. We already said the height is 17.77 meters, one half. We're trying to solve for K, and then we have 11 squared. All right, so here it's time to grab the calculator. So across here, I go 60 times 9.8. Times 17.77. Over here, I'll go times 2. Then I will divide by 11 squared. And I get a K value of 170. I'll go 3 to round it. And yeah, sure enough, it looks like the computer has given us the, the same answer. Okay, good. So that should be the answer there. Now, half of that. 86.4. Uh, well, maybe I should even talk about half of it, but half could be a very easy, common, but wrong answer. So a common, wrong answer. So I'll, I'll, just, I'll just stick to that and call it quits. All right, hope, hope that one helped. Bye now.